A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. We try all kinds of dating advice to find the one and may never come up with a surefire solution. But have we tried using math? Dr. Hannah Fry suggests thinking of the search for love like a math problem. Hannah's a mathematician and scientist. Today, she shares some theories that will help anyone play the odds the right way to find your perfect partner. I'm Hannah Fry. I am a mathematician. And today I want to talk to you about the mathematics of love. Now, I think that we can all agree that mathematicians are famously excellent at finding love. Um, (laughs) But it's not just because of our dashing personalities, superior uh, conversational skills, and excellent pencil cases. Peter Backus tries to rate his chances of finding love. Now, Peter's not a very greedy man. Of all of the available women in the UK, all Peter's looking for is somebody who lives near him, um, somebody the right age range, somebody with a university degree, um, somebody who's likely to get on well with, somebody who's likely to be attractive, somebody who's likely to find him attractive. (laughs) (laughs) And comes up with an estimate of 26 women in the whole of the UK. It's not looking very good, is it, Peter? Um, Now, just to put that into perspective, it gives Peter a 1 in 285,000 chance of bumping into any one of these special ladies on a given night out. Um, I like to think that's why mathematicians just don't really bother going on nights out anymore. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is that I personally don't subscribe to such a pessimistic view, because I know, just as well as all you do, that love doesn't really work like that. Human emotion isn't neatly ordered and rational and easily predictable. But I also know that that doesn't mean that mathematics hasn't got something that it can offer us. Because love, as with most of life, is full of patterns. And mathematics is ultimately ultimately all about the study of patterns. I believe that mathematics is so powerful that it has the potential to offer us a new way of looking at almost anything, even something as mysterious as love. And the reason why is that it's not just straightforward looks that are important. Okay, so let's imagine then that you're a roaring success um, on the dating scene. Um, But the question arises of how do you then convert that success um, into longer term happiness? And in particular, how do you decide when is the right time to settle down? Um, Now, generally, it's not advisable to just cash in and marry the first person who comes along and shows you any interest at all. Um, But equally, you don't really want to leave it too long Uh, if you want to maximize your chances of long-term happiness. So the question is then, um, how do you know when is the right time to settle down, given all the people that you could date in your lifetime? Now, thankfully, there's a rather delicious bit of mathematics that we can use to help us out here called optimal stopping theory. Um, Okay, so let's imagine then that you start dating when you're 15, um, and ideally, you'd like to be married by the time that you're 35. And there's a number of people that you could date across your lifetime, uh, that you could potentially date across your lifetime, and they'll be at kind of varying levels of, of goodness. Um, now, the rules are that once you cash in and get married, you can't look ahead to see what you could have had. Um, and equally, you can't go back and change your mind. Okay, so the math says then that what you should do in the first 37% of your dating window, you should just reject everybody as serious marriage potential. (laughs) And then you should pick the next person that comes along that is better than everybody that you've seen before. Now, unfortunately, um, I have to tell you that this method does come with some risks. Um, For instance, Uh, Imagine if your perfect partner appeared uh, during your first 37%. Uh, Now, unfortunately, you'd have to reject them. Um... (laughs) Uh, Now, if you are following the math, I'm afraid no one else comes along that's better than anyone you've seen before. So you have to go on rejecting everyone um, and die alone. Um, Probably surrounded by cats um, nibbling at your remains. Um, Okay, (laughs) another risk uh, is, let's imagine um, instead that uh, the first people that you dated in your first 37% uh, are just incredibly dull, boring, terrible people. uh, That's okay because you're in your rejection phase, um, so so that's fine, Uh, you can reject them. 
Um, but then imagine the next person to come along is just marginally less boring, dull, and terrible <laughs> than everybody that you've seen before. Now, if you are following the maths, I'm afraid you have to marry them um, <laughs> and end up in a relationship which is frankly suboptimal. Okay, so. This method uh, doesn't give you a 100% success rate. But I also think that subconsciously, humans, or, or we do sort of do this anyway, so we have give ourselves a little bit of time to kind of play the field, get a feel for the marketplace or whatever when we're, when we're young. But I hope that aside from their use as tips, they also give you a little bit of insight into the power of mathematics. Because for me, equations and symbols aren't just um, a thing. They're a voice that speaks out about the incredible richness of nature and the startling simplicity in the patterns that twist and turn and warp and evolve all around us, from how the world works to how we behave. And so I hope that perhaps for just a couple of you, a little bit of insight into the mathematics of love can persuade you to have a little bit more love for mathematics. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Binghamton, New York. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Binghamton University. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.